Okay, so we've already seen the point that in order for us to perform our analyses of data conveniently and easily using the functions provided by dplyr, we would like the data to be in a certain form. And that form is what we are calling tidy data. Okay, and we've also pointed out that quite often when we get the data, the data may not be in a form suitable or convenient for us to apply all of these uh, dplyr functions. So we go through a process of tidying up the data and uh, the dplyr library uh, package provides us with several useful functions to reshape the data in any form that we want. So as a first introduction to that, we'll be taking a look at the gather function that dplyr provides. Okay, so what are the causes of untidy data? Well, you can look at it in three different ways. If a value of what you would like to be a single attribute or a single column is in fact spread across multiple columns, then that data would be considered untidy for our purposes. Okay, so that's one form. Or a single observation may end up being spread across multiple rows. In other words, we want a particular row to have some numbers so that we can operate on them but unfortunately the numbers we are looking at are spread across multiple rows so for example in the earlier uh, from the earlier lecture we had this uh, row for a country Afghanistan or any particular country right so we had the country name let's say Afghanistan we had the year 1999 and then we had uh, in the first table we had cases as one column population as another column Okay, now this facilitated us to very easily compute the proportion or the rate of incidence of that disease because we could just create a new column that said the new column is cases divided by population times 10,000. Okay, but in the second representation of the data, the cases and population were on multiple rows. Right, cases was on one row, population was on another row. So immediately that creates a problem for us because we won't be able to use the dplyr mutate function to do what we want. Okay, so if the data is given as in the form of table 2, we may want to recast it in the form of table 1. Or sometimes it goes the other way. You want the data to be in multiple rows, but it happens to be on a single row. So that also could be a problem. That is one attribute being spread, spread across multiple columns or one observation spread across multiple rows. Okay, so take this example. So we've got here uh, the same data. This is from the fourth representation of the data. You've got the cases in the year 1999 in one column and the number of cases in the year 2000 in a different column. Okay, so for whatever purpose, suppose we want them, uh, the, the cases and the population, uh, the number of cases to be in one column. In other words, both of these columns represent data which is the number of cases of the particular disease occurring. Right? So both of them are representing the same data in some sense. So if we want them all to be on one column, then what do you do? Okay? So all of these represent the values of a single attribute called cases, but in this example the the one attribute called cases is distributed across two columns and that can pose a problem sometimes. Okay, and of course again I emphasize we are using the back ticks in the column names only because the column names are non-standard. Right? If the column names were standard like year 1, year 2, then we didn't need to use back ticks at all. Okay, so this is what we have and let us say this is what we want. Okay, so again notice the information contained in both of these tables is exactly the same. But the form in which the information is presented is different. Okay, so in other words we want to take information in both of these columns, 1999, 2000 and put them all into one column where the 1999 and 2000 occur in the column called years and all of these numbers occur in a, in a column called cases. Okay, so we want to take data that is given like this and transform it into data that looks like this right right because once the data looks like this as we already know we can do easy processing with it okay and the nice thing of course what we are trying to do here is we are just saying uh, both of these columns go into a column called year the number of cases they all go into one column right and 
we are calling this new column that we are creating to put these two values as year. Okay, the very easy way to achieve all of this is it's actually quite quite powerful to look at how it's done. We say table for a that is this table. Pipe it to a t plier function called gather, right? So gather that's a meaningful function, right? Because we are taking data that is spread across multiple columns and gathering them into one column. So that is why the name of the function is gather. It's a meaningful name. And then we are saying gather the data from columns named 1999 and 2000. Okay, put them into a new, put this, the column names themselves into a new column called year. Right, so the 1999 and 2000 have gone into these columns and value is cases. So the value that was in both of these columns is going to go into a new column called cases. Okay, that's it. So you do this and it's going to convert this into this. Okay, so gather is this important function to do this. And later on we will look at another function that will take data given like this and if for any reason we want the data to be cast like that, okay, that's another kind of function that we'll be looking at. Okay, that is called spread. Take the data in one column, spread it across multiple columns. But in this particular lecture, we are looking at the gather function. Okay, so the, the structure of the gather function looks like this. You say gather and then you give it a number of column names. Right, in this case, the columns names are 1999, 2000. They're non-standard column names. Therefore, we use backticks. Okay, so the first part of gather is just a list of column names separated by commas, right? Then we say, what is going to be the name of the new column which contains the original column names, right? The data in the original column names, right, is the column names are going to now become data. So what is the name of that new column? And what is the name for the column that contains the gathered values? Okay, that is key. Key is that which is the uh, the name for the new column and value is the name for the new column containing the values. Okay, and key is the name for the new column that contains the values that were originally column names. Okay, again, I think if you look at what got transformed, it's a lot easier to understand what is the meaning of key and value. Okay, so we let's try to combine tables 4a and 4b and try to recreate table 1, right? So we say tidy 4a is gathered values from 4a, tidy 4b is the gathered values from 4b, right? So value is cases, value is population. So we now have these two columns, okay? Now what we want to do is to put these two together, side by side, not top and bottom, side by side. And the function to achieve that is what is called left join. Okay, I won't get into too much detail about left join right now. We'll be discussing that shortly in an upcoming lecture, right? But this function is what is used to join tables uh, one to the other, right? So if you can see here, tidy 4a and tidy 4b are two tables that are going to look like this, right? Tidy 4a will have this for the number of cases and tidy 4b will look like this except that instead of cases, it'll have population. Okay, now we, what we want to do is to put both of them together to create a table that looks like table one, where cases is one column, population is another column, right? But uh, the, the country and the year are going to be same in both. So what we want to do is to match up the country year across both of these and create a column called case and add a new column called population. And that is what left join achieves, but uh, we won't get into it now because there's a later discussion that really talks about how do you join tables together, tables together. Okay, so this is covered later as I have pointed out. Okay, now when you perform gathering, sometimes you might end up with NAs. Okay, so let's take this example. It's a contrived example, right? So we're creating a, a, a new table, table that looks like this, right? So we've got a column called pregnant, male, female, uh, and then yes, of course, uh, you know, this is not possible. There cannot be any values here, right? And of course, there can be uh, values here. Okay, so 
suppose you want to gather this into one column, right? So you want to have a column called gender that will have male and female and you want to have a column called uh, the count which shows you the number of people in each of those categories, right? So we can just say from this uh, gather male, female, that is the two columns male and female. Key is gender, so put them into a column called gender and the value is count. So take all of these values, put them into a column called count. Okay, so of course when you do that, you're going to get an NA, NA here. Okay, and you may say, well, look, this is meaningless. Why should you even have this row? Everybody knows that this row is meaningless. Okay, so you may want to eliminate that row. Okay, so you can do the same thing. You can just say NA.RM equals true. Okay, that's stuff that we've already done many times. NA.RM equals true. And you add that, and then you'll get this, the first row that was earlier there was eliminated, is now eliminated.